welcome to another video and this one is a bit different to the sort of stuff you'll usually find on this channel something a bit special because it is a special time for path of exile with ExileCon coming up so today for this occasion i'm joined by a special guest welcome to the channel talkative try how are you doing i'm doing pretty well today it's about 6 40 over where i am my wife and daughter are both asleep but i am quite excited to talk to you dreamcar I've been watching your videos for the past few months. In fact, I saw your channel blow up right before mine. <laughs> and I think it's one of the best new Pee Wee channels out there on YouTube. I appreciate that, dude. It's great to have you on. For anyone who's not familiar with you, tell us a little bit about your channel. Yeah, so I'm I'm really creating what I wanted to see on PoE in the content creation sphere. More of a positive outlook on the game. You know, a lot of my favorite creators especially around, you know, Calandra League, into Sanctum, into Crucible. They were all a little bit negative about the game, and it kind of turns me off. So I, I take a very positive approach to GGG, Path of Exile, and the future of the game. Plus, I am looking at the history of the game, too. Being a live service model, Path of Exile has pushed out more new content in such a short span of time. It's wild to look at where it began back in 2010 and where it is today in 2023. And that's something that I really love showcasing to everybody across YouTube. So good stuff. Yeah, that's fascinating. Honestly, like that's one of my favorite parts of your channel is the flashback series. Like for me, I started in 3.10. So looking back and seeing how things started and where they've got to now is actually incredible. It's just a, a crazy it, transition. It is absolutely insane. I, I started in Blight the day before ExileCon 1, which is kind of wild. I was playing Diablo 3, and my wife was in the UP visiting her family, and I grew bored, so bored of T3 in Act 3. And I said, okay, I, I can't play this anymore, but I really like the style of game. And I Googled games like Diablo, found Path of Exile, <laughs> and have been hooked ever since, especially since I saw the whole ExileCon keynote one day into playing the game. So I really grew attached to the developers i saw the passion for the game and everything and it was just wonderful yeah all right so we've prepared some predictions for the new ExileCon that's coming up and uh this video is going to be our predictions for the 3.22 league announcements at ExileCon. and we have no idea what each other has for their predictions so we could be a could be a bit of overlap there i guess and we're going to do three predictions each and we'll go one after the other so since you're the guest Try, I'll let you begin with your first prediction. Take it away. All right. Thanks, Dreamcore. So here we are. This is going to be, in my opinion, either or. So 3.22 is either going to be a banger Atlas expansion or a league we've all been waiting for. And I'll, I'll wait for my next prediction before I get to that. But I think 3.22, the most likely thing, is that it is the final Atlas expansion for Path of Exile 1 before Path of Exile 2's campaign comes out. Zana will be the new Pinnacle boss, and there will be a brand new content system in the game. And I'm going to call it Trapped in the Atlas. So it's going to be Path of Exile, Trapped in the Atlas. And this new system is going to involve an ultimatum-like mechanic where Zana throws maps at you one after the next and each gains, you know, new modifiers, new groups of monsters, and you're you're flung at these maps almost like a gauntlet, right? You're fighting through these maps and it's almost an infinite tier system. And as you progress through said gauntlet, you get fragments that eventually build up to the Zana boss fight and you get a new type of jewel, an Atlas jewel. They only drop here in this type of content. And these are a lot like the relics found in Sanctum League. Some of the rare ones are consumable, single use, and they edit your atlas in incredible ways. They guarantee you rewards. You know, some of the ideas I have are like, you know, you go into the Eater of Worlds with this. This jewel will enhance that encounter once it's consumable, kind of like the no-hit challenge in Sanctum. Triple his hit points, triple his damage, everything. But it will give him a 30% more chance to drop a specific Forbidden Flesh or an Ashes of the Star, something like that. That sounds really, really cool. I really, really like the idea of modifying those endgame encounters. That's a really, really cool idea. And I do have something fairly similar to that prediction, but I won't bring that up just yet. I'll, I'll, I'll have that as my last one. 
Ooh, okay, okay. I had one more thing to add to that too. Go on. The Zana fight. I feel like if we do fight her, the fight will have in it somehow uh, still sane exile line, and that will be the die beam line from Cirrus, right? Ooh, yeah, I feel like okay. it could be like, you're no longer sane exile, and then she'll blast us with something <laughs> massive. I think it would just be absolutely perfect after, you know, us essentially being introduced to the mapping system with her and Forsaken Masters all the way back in 1.2, right? Maps existed beforehand, but with her, it really cemented the system as something that can include past content into the game with her missions. And then the Atlas of Worlds, you know, she was a key point in that. And her story has evolved all the way up until Siege of the Atlas, right? I feel right before POE 2, if she makes a return and she's somehow villainous, you know, we fight her because... We've gone too insane. I think that's quite feasible, and I think that would be that would be quite enjoyable too. Yeah, I can definitely see it happening. That's a... All right, what do you have for us, Dreamcore? All right, so my first prediction is quite a big one, and it's six or more Ascendancy reworks. So I think Ascendancy reworks are going to be a big thing in this expansion. We heard a lot from Chris in the Q&A with Ziggy D. He talked about how their plans for Crucible originally was to have Half of the Ascendancies reworked in that league, and then they were going to bring all of the Ruthless Ascendancy changes in at the same time. And I would say, based on that information, six is probably a bit conservative, actually. We had two already in Crucible, and I think there's just going to be many Ascendancy reworks in 3.22. And I think, really, this is not, not a case of power level between Ascendancies. It's not a case of balancing the Ascendancies. It's more a case of them bringing up their goals for Path of Exile 2. The launch is coming up. We know that it's coming soon. And we know that they want to balance the old Ascendancies in a way that the new Ascendancies will make sense. We also know that they want to kind of make these Ascendancy notables have like impactful stats, just one or two lines. Nothing nothing too that kind of confuses the new players or something like that. It's just yeah. one or two impactful stats. And we've already seen that coming through on the Pathfinder. Pathfinder has like a couple of nodes with one stat. Savitar has has nodes with just two stats. So I think we're going to see a lot of Ascendancy reworks. I'm going with six or more. I could see them just coming out and doing all of them in one go because they had... Oh, totally. I mean, personally, I'd like to see Gladiator reworked most. That's my that's my pick. Like, uh, Gladiator is just in the trash for so long. <laughs> so it needs a rework. But yeah, I'm going six or more Ascendancy reworks for my first prediction. That's, I, I think you're right on the mark with more than six. I think they'll come out, they'll rework every single Ascendancy that hasn't been touched already. And yeah, you're totally right. It makes sense that they're going to try to move these to be a little bit more simple. You know, yeah. but powerful and perhaps editing the skills and very specific play styles like we saw with the POE2 Ascendancies. I think they might be trying to move even more of the complexity off the Ascendancies, right? Which can be simple, powerful, and put that on the actual massive passive skill tree. Yeah. That's my kind of vibe. I feel like, I'll get to this prediction later, but I feel like the, the skill tree, it's not as deep and complex as it's going to be in later areas of the game. But something yeah. like Ascendancies, you know, this this blanket on top of it, I think they're trying to simple it down so that more people can can see, right, how cool this system is. Um, I'm surprised. Do you know that the Chinese realm lists the Ascendancy classes on character select? Yeah, I've seen that, actually. Yeah, they have a lot of quality of life features that we don't have, right? They have, like, the um, the Ascendancy tree pathing as well that you can... Yeah, yeah, I I think showing those on character select would entice people further. I wonder what the design decision is behind hiding those. Because when I started, I thought it was just Witch, Marauder, Duelist, Shadow, whatever. I did not know. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's the surprise factor because it was the same with the passive skill tree. It was just, wow, oh my goodness, this is wild. And then I reached Act 3, saw, wait, I can become a totally different class, essentially? What is this? This is wild. Maybe that's what they're going for. It is interesting that they haven't got that in the the Path of Exile that we play because it's yeah. it's almost missable, the Ascendancy, the way it is right now. Uh -huh. I mean, some people actually do miss it on their first playthrough. So Yep. I, I don't think that's going to be a thing in the Path of Exile 2 campaign, by the way, because I think they're going to simplify it right. and make it part of the campaign. But Roll it in. Yeah, yeah. that 100% that makes sense. So that's it. Six or more Ascendancy classes. What have you got for your second prediction? All right. 
I said they were going to be an either or because we know Atlas expansions come with the classic fight monsters in a circle mechanic or something more simple like Sentinel, which was still absolutely incredible in my view of compared to Crucible. Wow, what a league. Yeah. But 3.22 could be Atlas, uh, Escape from the Atlas, or the long-awaited Boat League, and I would pitch it as Path of Exile Voyage, right? Ooh. Uh, I think it would be very similar to a mapping style mechanic where we, or a Forbidden Sanctum style mechanic, where we venture to islands, we clear them of monsters, and we establish outposts onto them. This would add a new hug to the game, kind of like the Rogue Harbor, um, where players could meet, set off on ships, going to these islands. There would be a host of new NPCs, and I think it would drive us toward where we begin Path of Exile 2, which is in the land of the Azomites. Those isles over in there, I believe it's called Scoth. Uh, I think a new mechanic could be, like in Bastiary, a lure of some sort, a bait that we could take into an island that would bait certain powerful monsters with special rewards to said island, almost like a, uh, a scarab for these islands, but they'd be far more difficult and far more game-changing. Uh, our ship would be like the map device, right? Instead of you know using a map device to go somewhere to transport six areas, We'd use a ship, we'd go to this island. And there would be a new pinnacle boss because I swear we have been missing out on league pinnacle bosses now since Crucible. I think it could be a Leviathan of some sort in a Katava fight, right? This massive Leviathan we fight on the ship. This will all be a glimpse of stuff that they're using from Path of Exile 2, which is something that we're seeing right now. Let's be honest, like Crucible, I'm sure that area is in PUE 2. Sanctum, we saw that in the first trailer for PUE 2. They're going to do the same here. I think that sounds insane, actually. The the Viathan fight on the boat itself is just crazy. And I've heard this idea of like a a boat league where you have something similar to Delve, where you go to like the Delve Bios, but instead you're going to different islands. Love it. Kind of exploring different islands, things that you've never been to before in Path of Exile. That would be absolutely phenomenal. And I, I think it might be likely like. I'm of the mindset that this is going to be a huge expansion, right? They, they're smart. They're going to capitalize even before everything that's going down right now. They knew that, you know, Diablo 4 would bring lots of new players to the genre. Some people would be disappointed with it and they'd seek alternatives. This lines up almost perfectly. This could be huge for them and they know it. They've capitalized on it with, you know, Diablo 3. They built their game on the skeleton of Diablo 2, right? Why can't they do the same with Diablo 4 right now? I think they have a huge opportunity, and I think the the player numbers for 3.22 are going to be the highest they've ever been. I think so, too. I think that it's going to be a giant league for Path of Exile. Yeah, oh, man. What if we're wrong, Dream Core? (laughs) Well, (laughs) I I really hope it it is a big league, because I think the league mechanics recently... You know, Sanctum was good, and I think Sanctum had a lot of really good content and interesting content added to the game. Obviously, it's gone now, but yeah. it might come back. But, you know, the recent lead mechanics have been a bit bland. They've been a bit thin on the ground in terms of content. And you got to think that they've got all hands on deck with Path of Exile 2, but I think that yeah. the Atlas expansion slot was the Crucible League, and they didn't do it. Mm-hmm. So I think they're holding off on that for Exilecon because that's the big one where they get to announce it live. They get to you know, drive yeah. the hype home and, and that's <laughs> I think I think that's what they want to do. Hundred percent. All right. So All right. Uh, yeah. Nice prediction. My second prediction. Sanctum added as a core league mechanic to the game Ooh. and Sentinel replaces Torment. So Hell yeah. I think Sanctum was probably one of the most beloved league mechanics in recent memory. There was a huge, huge response from the community of people saying they just love this league mechanic. I think it did split the player base slightly. There were some people who, were, who didn't really like that kind of thing, but I think the majority of people loved it. And I think that they don't really want to waste that content because if you compare that to other league mechanics recently, it seemed that there was a lot more basis there. There was more work put into it. You know, they, they had all of these new areas, new mobs doing new things. And I think they, they're not going to want to, you know, they're not a, a company that usually wastes content. They like to reuse assets a lot you know make make sure that things are Definitely. used in the game in the future if they're good you know if it i think they're not afraid to throw something out if it's bad they always take chances with leaks but 
Sanctum wasn't bad. It was actually really, really good. And I think it's going to it's gonna return in this league. I think they've been waiting for that. They probably wanted to change it up a little bit. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to work. Whether when you find Sanctum in your maps, you'll maybe run three or four rooms at a time, maybe five rooms at a time. Or maybe it will be slimmed down so that you run a floor each time, but you find it quite rarely. You know, they, they may have added new things to it, but I could see it just being as it was. The only thing that I think is going to be different is that there's going to be no Sanctified Relics, because I think that's, that's oh, the thing okay. that was part of the league. I think Sanctified Relics are too much player power creep overall. Okay. Uh, so I think they're going to be gone, but I think the, the currency from the league is still going to be there, which is going to make it attractive, because it was a very, very good league for getting currency. You think that the only reward will remain currency? I think if they want to rework part of the league, they'd add different reward rooms uh, instead of just currency. You know, based on, I'd say that based on the exact room you're encountering, you know, the gauntlet room, uh, the fighting room, I, I think each would reward a different type of item, you know, a lot like what they do in a lot of other leagues. Although I, do that, yeah. yeah, I hope they stay away from rewarding other league specific currency in there because i i am a fan of doing a league and getting the special stuff from that league right yeah incubators from legion timeless jewels from legion uh oils from blight splinters and clusters from delirium stuff like that and so you have to focus on specific things it's really cool and it encourages you to go and try new things in the game especially if you play the game like you do and is it hardcore solo self found right I do enjoy hardcore so Oh, there you go. Yeah, so I'm a fan of that. Yeah, I, I really don't like... I, I completely agree with you. I, I hate when there's a league that just gives you everything, you know, and you don't have to yep. go and go and search for different things. Like, for example, yep. like Heist was when it first came out. Oh, yeah. A few leagues after it got added. You know, Heist was the go-to for everything. You go in there, you get currency, you get cluster jewels, you get oils. Obviously, it's been yep. nerfed a bit now, but it's still it's still quite good. I think yeah. one good example of that is Delve, actually. You know, if you, you, you really do need to go to Delve to get yep. the Delve-related stuff, fossils and things like that, if you want to resonate on that stuff, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, and I, I do think that the, the boss will return to Forbidden Sanctum as well with the uniques. I'm not sure if they'll be the power level that they were because I think, like, <laughs> Eternal Damnation was a little bit ridiculous. Let's just be honest there. So I think Eternal Damnation is going to be nerfed. It's probably going to be, like, a third as effective as what it was or something like that, or maybe 50%. How about uh, the original Sen? You think that'll come back with the no-hit challenge? I'd like to see it come back, but, the th I mean, is it too powerful? I'm not, it is very powerful, <laughs> that item. But it, then again, you do need to build an entire character around doing the no-hit right. challenge. Maybe they could make it so that the original Sin isn't tradable, right? What if, what if you're getting what into if, spicy territory yeah, there? What, what if the relics? What if the, these kind of rewards? You know, the relics themselves. We know that you know they they weren't tradable. We had people yeah. like going crazy and just farming those forever. And some people just. I remember watching Waggle actually. He was trying to farm. He was trying to farm the uh, the original sin, and he just couldn't get the the right relic to drop, so that he oh. could, he could do that run. You know, so yeah, maybe, maybe if it wasn't a guaranteed drop chance too. Yeah, you, I guess you could do that, yeah. But it, it is such a powerful item, so I'm I'm not sure if that will come back. I don't know. But okay. I, I think the boss will come back with all of her dedicated drops, but I think they may, they may be balanced. I know we've been lingering on it for a bit, but am, am I the only... I know I'm not the only one, but were you also in the same boat when it first released the Lycia second phase? Those red lightning storms absolutely murdered me. I know oh, you dodge through them, but she, I couldn't see them. I swear, and I have a, I have an okay computer. Yeah. I literally could not see them the first week of the league. Yeah, the bot, that boss room itself was was a little bit weird when you first went in there a couple of times. Like it's just right. I loved it though, and it, it was the first time we've gone to I, I think beyond right, which yeah. is this huge part of the Path of Exile lore. I, I'll talk about it a bit later, but that was pretty cool too. Yeah, okay, so the other part of this prediction was Sentinel replacing Torment. I think that's a natural replacement. Yep. And so I think how this is going to work is, actually, instead of the Sentinel following the player around, the Sentinel will just spawn in maps just like how the Torment ghosts spawn right now. And when you go near them, they'll just empower all the mobs near them, and, that, and that's it. it. basically buffs the mobs, they're stronger, they, they provide more rewards. Huge fan. Huge fan of that. No arguments for me. I think those are both very sensible and hinged expectations. I do think... Beloved league mechanics in the past, along with maybe Ultimatum, maybe. 
Ultimatum is a weird one because it's like, how are they going to... Because obviously we already have the Trial Master now, so... Yep. Will they just kind of put the, the, the League mechanic in and then it, it just grants rewards until maybe he's still... Maybe he's actually still a rare possibility of an outcome. Now. Yeah. He was already incredibly rare, too. He was rare, yeah, At the same rare. chance. I mean, I played that League quite a bit. Yeah. And I literally couldn't find him. And I wasn't sharing challenges at that time because I was a stubborn little child. <laughs> <laughs> and... I did not get that challenge, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I think recombinators will come back as well with Sentinel, yes. but I do think that they'll be nerfed because oh, yeah. if you remember when they re-added tainted currency to the game, that it was nerfed, and then they went back and changed it. So I think what we could see is it comes in nerfed, people complain about it, maybe they're just not very good anymore, and perhaps it gets changed again in the future. But I do think... It's one of those things, recombinators kind of break a lot of rules with Path of Exile's craft, yep. which is why yeah. why I think they haven't added them to the game yet. That's what I think. I think uh, Sanctum Adders is a core league mechanic and Sentinel replacing Torment. They are recombinators. The quintessential Chris Wilson, close your eyes as you crack mechanic, <laughs> though. So I, <laughs> I could see them coming in at a reasonable power level. <laughs> all right so for 3.22 what is your third and final prediction all right it's a simple one i'll be quick i think for 3.22 we will get two new chase uniques that are world drops and they're not belts they're not rings they're not helms they're not shields they are weapons one oh, for okay. a ranged or spellcaster archetype and one for attack builds we have a lot of chase items in poe you know, Mage Blood, Headhunter, the Squire being the most prominent. I think it would be awesome if right before POE 2, we received two weapons that are chase items. And I know weapons are something that a lot of people love to craft and spend a lot of currency and time on. But having that, you know, one in whatever the drop rate is for Headhunter or Mage Blood, one in a million, one in five million, ten million chance to drop one of these GG weapons would be phenomenal. I'd be a huge fan of it, and I'd try to collect it. I'd try to go for it. And putting a lot of power on a weapon like this would be pretty awesome, I think. I'd I'd love to see that. I mean, where weapons are one of those things where rare weapons, at least for a long, long time, have been, you know, the the best things you can get. If you get a well-crafted weapon, then it completely outclasses unique weapons. Like, even the ones that have special mechanics, it just completely outclasses them in terms of damage, so... I think maybe if you had like a, a special melee weapon and obviously you could have spell cast as well, perhaps they have different variations that drop on the weapon. Uh, so yeah. Based on like the type. forges. Yeah, like Void Forge, Echo Forge. Exactly. So for example, you could have one that's very good with physical damage, perhaps it's good with bleeding, and then you could have one that's more based on elemental damage, maybe one for chaos damage. And you could have the similar thing with spells, where perhaps there's a modifier on there that's something to do with mana. And there could be something to do with spending life or or just, just different different mechanics that are kind of interweaved into those items to make them special when they drop. You're like, which one am I going to get? I love that. Totally yeah. love that idea. It would be really cool, uh, final edition, you know, before PUE 2 to add one of these to the game. Yeah, I think so too. Awesome. Right. That was it. It was short, quick. That's all. Yeah, all right. So my third prediction goes back to your first prediction. And that's just, I think Zana's going to return in this Okay. Expansion in, in some some kind of way, Zana is going to return. I don't know if she's going to be an enemy or whether she's going to be an ally. Maybe she's going to be changed in some way. She's like a little bit. You're like, what's going on with her? You know, is, 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 can I trust her anymore? Basically. Yeah. But I I think she's definitely going to come back. It, it it's one of those things where when she left, I think people just thought, well, she's going to come back at some point. It's just a matter of when is it going to happen. Yeah. And I had I had to think about this one a bit because I think it's either going to be in this league or it's going to be in PoE 2, one of the two. It makes sense for them to have Zana in the trailer live at ExileCon because it's going to pop the audience. You know, oh, yeah. the, the audience are going to go a bit crazy for that one. So I think I think she's going to turn up. I mean, maybe she's she just has this this part in the in the trailer right at the end where it's just really sinister and you don't really know exactly what's going on, right? So. She she could be an enemy. I, I don't know if she's going to be a boss. Like I, I I've heard a lot of people speculate about her being a boss. Obviously, yep. you talked about that as well. She could be a new pinnacle boss. I, I could see her being somehow involved with the Alice expansion if there is one. Maybe she'll be kind of like I said, a bit of a, an entity that you don't really know what's going on with her until Poe two, where she becomes her final form. You know, perhaps she she has something to do with 
to do with the Definitely. progression there. But yeah, Zana returning, I think that's that makes sense for this league. Yeah, I think you're right with the exile con point too. People would go absolutely wild for that. She actually made an appearance at the first exile con. Her actual voice actress dressed up as Xana. Yeah. And I think she had they had a map device there and everything. So I, I think you're right. I think the Exile Crown crowd would absolutely love it. And they obviously have an excellent relationship with the person who plays Xana. There's no reason they would just get rid of her for Kirak and then never bring her back. They took her away because they planned to drop her back into the game at the perfect moment. Four or five leagues later, now's the time. I mean, what if she just comes in and just like kills Kirak in the trailer? <laughs> I, I, think, you know? I think that could happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Finishing uh, the job that Sirius started, you know, when Sirius took takes Kirik out, yeah, start of his boss fight, yeah, yeah, she's gonna do it. All right, <laughs> okay, so that's it. That's our predictions for three point two two. The announcements at ExoCon. Thanks for joining me. Try it. it's been great. Oh, a hundred percent. This was awesome. I hope we can do something uh, like this again next time. Maybe after ExoCon when three point two two is announced. This has been pretty chill. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Dude, thanks for thanks for coming on. It's been great. Thank you. All right, so that was our predictions for the Path of Exile 3.22 League announcements at ExileCon. We're just a few days away now, and you can catch our predictions for the Path of Exile 2 announcements over on Talkative Tries channel. The link for that will be in the description below. He's going to be putting those up the day after these, so depending on when you're watching this, they may already be up. Do go over there and check out his channel. He makes some great content. And hopefully we can do more collaborations like this one in the future. What do you guys think about the 3.22 League announcements? Are we going to see the return of Zana, maybe even as a new Pinnacle boss? And what about those Ascendancy reworks? How many will there be? Do let me know your own predictions in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. And as always, stay tuned and stay safe.